So, if you didn't see the last one, we bought a hedge cutter. And if you didn't see the last one, then uh, today we're going to go through the hedge cutter and explain why I've bought it now. So we'll start with the quick update and where we're up to and what, what it is and all this lot. So we bought a P, uh, McConnell PA 590, 5.9 uh, metre each machine. Uh, picked this up on Wednesday. Have we got an age on it here? No, we haven't got an age on it there. Um, yeah, and today we are going to go through it and just sort of make sure it's fit for purpose make sure it's ready to go um but <laughs> got a bit in in the comment section and of why i bought this now you know we are about two weeks left of the season and you know it it might seem a bit mad but the, <laughs> there is there is reason there is a logic behind my madness so I'll explain that first so part of the reason is the whole kind of supply and demand thing. If I were, you went try and buy a hedge cutter, sort of September time, uh, yeah, there'd be probably a good few knocking around. But the trouble is, everyone would be after them. Which means, if you found one, you had to act quick and hope you bought a good one. And the other thing is, um, when you went to buy it, basically you'd have no wiggle room. The dealership or the guy selling it knows that if you don't buy it there'll be somebody coming probably this afternoon that will buy it he's not going to bother on the price it is what it is buying it this time of year you know they're not going to want it sat in the shed sat in, around their yard until september so they're more inclined to you know have a bit of a deal with you meaning you can get a better machine for less money so that's point one Point two, um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure this one out in the edit a minute. So, point two, and this is the important one. This is all about your customer relations and all that lot. Now, say you bought a hedge cut at the start of the season. You lined up all your work for it. It's an unknown machine to you. And, say, for argument's sake... Pump goes, or you realise there's some bushes that need replacing, desperately need replacing. So, you end up with your new machine stood down for a week or two. When all your customers are screaming at you to come and cut your hedges. Some of them probably got, you know, some funny, funny ground that it needs to be done now, or you won't get onto it. So, they go get somebody else to do it. So, by the time you've got me speed machine back up and running again you've now lost some of your cl client base buying it now i have i think about probably three or four days edge cutting to do with it these are customers that has had assigned this on themselves to the point that these hedges weren't get, getting cut so if they don't get cut it's not the end of the world so it gives me time to shake down the machine and get some work done with it to the, know the machine's right then when we start next hedge cutting season, theoretically, I know the machine's ready to go. I know I can get to my customers and do the job. Makes sense, doesn't it? Not so always as daft as, it, as you think I am. So, before we start this, we do have something important to do with something up the top of the shed. Hold up. So, international box. We actually have some parts. I have no idea what we've got, but we have some parts. So, let's have a look, see what we've got. Two track rods. I know the, the ones on don't seem too bad, but hey, we're going to buy a set of new ones on. Hold up. That's a big box. Right. 
Right. Get into this thing. Okay. What we got? We have one complete hub with brand new wheel nuts. You'd probably put the bearings on as well, wouldn't you? Ready to take the wheel bearings and everything. We have. I would say they are the bolts for attaching that part of the axle into there. They should have some sort of sleeving or bushing, I think. Right, okay. And of course, if you've got bolts, you can't have bolts without nuts. And the last but not least, it can stop in the box there, I think. We have the new spindle to replace the one that got launched. So, we actually have something to start sorting out the, out the old international. Right, uh, first job, I think, I'm going to get this head stretched out. I'm going to start with the edge cutter going through greasing it. Seems a bit of a weird thing to do, but... I'll explain the, the thought process. Basically, if I grease this now, I will have gone from where the PTO attaches to the tractor to the very end of the head and been through the machine to pick up anything that I can find that I think is a little bit suspect so we can make a list if it does need anything. I did go to the dealership for some bits this morning but <laughs> that turned out, out to be a bit counterproductive um so it was after some electrical connections i'll explain all that somewhere on this video bit of paint because there's a plate on it that's been sort of welded on the side that i want to get a bit of paint on that and as we've seen there's that bit on the boom that also could do with the right color paint on Turned out the dealership, they are, they are on the Connell dealership. JCB yellow? Yeah, yeah, plenty of that. Sanderson yellow? Who the F is going in there for Sanderson yellow? I know, Casto, I'm sorry, I know you have one, but you, you're not in Cheshire, so it doesn't count. So, <laughs> yeah, if, if you want any paint for your... Uh, P. Sanderson Casto, uh, Chest Farm Machinery. Got loads of the stuff in. So, first, that's the first thing we do. We're going to get this stretched out, grab the grease gun, and we're going to go around and uh, basically go through the machine as, as the first real serious proper inspection. Right, so I thought I'd uh, do it a bit backwards. I'm going to start from this end and work back towards the tractor. Um, I thought, thought there was a rubber there, but no, I'm getting confused. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the head has had a bit of bit of work, but not the end of the world. Um, yeah, Anthony Farm was saying he runs a, a McConnell something similar. I can't remember what his is. Something similar to this. But he was on the back, and rightly so, putting uh, a rubber strip along the front just to help the... Uh, Help the job a bit. One thing I have seen, I've seen more and more of it as as I'm looking. There is a lot of non-genuine bolts in here, which I'm not I'm not overly keen on. See that? I think that's a genuine bolt. They're all a bit. I mean, it should make for easy getting out, but I'm just a little bit not overly happy to see them. I say the state, 
The flails are actually a bit worse than, than I thought. I thought I could add a bit of life left to turn them, but it doesn't look like I have. So, but like I said, um, only got like about, I'd say maximum about four days to do with it. So it'll do to get them little jobs done out of the way. Then I can, I can look at changing the flails. Like I said, we'll go for a set of competitions in it. So I'll just have run that what's name up. That seems all right. So, grease points. Start with the bearings. Do like to give them a good, good pump. One thing he did say about this, uh, the roller, is really not in very good condition. The thing is, I'm really not fussed about that because I never use the rollers anyway. I always leave them lifted, dried up, and when I'm do doing copping out work, grass work. I tend to hover it anyway, and I mean, the, the plan is we've got that over there for grass. Why not use that to do the grass and use this to do the hedges? There's ideas on that, but we're limited on what we can do. Budget will only stretch so far. Taking grease just nicely so far. So, you see, I do say about this quite often, but I do, do live by it. As you see, that is not your standard horrible white grease. I you try and use a good quality grease. End of the day, tube of quality grease is still cheaper than new bearings and bushes. Seems quite... These creases. Oh, I'm sure the ones are. Oh. Get the right angle for the dangle. <laughs> I say most people. Oh. Video of the introduction, who were, were very sort of kind and very pleased for me, and really want to thank everyone on this. That has been there's, there's always the mod keyboard warriors that think they know best. So, I'm trying just over greasing this a bit, but that's more to get out whatever old grease is in there so it's all nice quality grease in there so i mean you had to cover it itself but i've just noticed there's a bit of a a drip off that one ram there which really not the end of the world keep an eye on it if it does get bad i can always get it get it resealed the, he the head does seem like it's had a bit of a bit of grief it's had a, I say, a new plate on here. These McConnell heads do do seem to bloody crack up something chronic anyway. I mean, they've done a pretty good job, you know. They've cut it out and all that lot, and all the bolts sort of fit back on. And some of the welding's a bit, but it's good enough to stick it down, kind of thing. It's not horrific. Uh, had a bit of a repair there and no crack cracks come in here they do makes it we can ne never get it 
it's like where them, them stay bars are obviously because you get a lot of crap in that and puts a lot of stress on on it but see why it's ended up having that plate in it I'm not really sure and that side's had a had a crack through I mean but worst case scenario I could find, soon find another head for it but that said this head does seem to be pretty smooth so Sometimes you're better the devil you know than the devil you don't. So we are going to get that this guard off here. We can maybe see if we can get the MIG rigged up. coming out right well i'm going to carry on working my way down the boom and all that lot and we'll see where we get to so we have found well we've seen a couple of little problems nothing nothing too serious um a little bit wet on that ram which you'd expect because it's a ram that gets all the grief and we're also a little bit wet on this ram. They're not bad, they'll probably be serviceable. It's just something to keep an eye on. Uh, and the other issue we've just found, we have an oil leak. Which is that uh, return pipe. Is that the no, feed pipe, sorry, that is. Out the bottom of the tank into the pumps which is really no great drama I hear footsteps so I say you just see the oh well, they're just dripping so I'm kind of hoping I'm going to all clean end up properly I'm kind of hoping might get away with just clamping it up a bit tighter have to keep an eye on that one. Hey. So we do have another little job to do on this. Um, basically, the plan is to give it a bumper. I'm not sure what that's all about. Bump through there. I can't see what it's bolting. But basically, probably going to come off here and off same over there and we're going to put a bumper across the back here which will take tail lights because it has none um a pair of flashes and possibly even a number plate yeah not not going too carried away but basically it'll go from there to there straight across the back of the machine Bit of a bumper bar. You can see that leaking now. So, yes, we are going to have to draw SR oil leak. That's nothing nothing too serious. Uh, everything now is greased up. Very easy to grease this, actually. And some, some McConnells have, have been involved in the past. They've been an absolute swipe to grease. Uh, the only one I haven't done is up there um i don't know whether you can see it there basically i'm going to take that grease nipple out swap it for a true 90. hopefully get it stuck up and that'll uh, sort that we have just seen a little crack here as well so whilst we've got the welder out it's nothing serious but we'll just drill a hole in the end there stop it going, going any further and uh, weld that back up I'm sure we've got a bit of something going on there as well focus 
Do that with your focus better. Ah. Again, nothing, nothing too serious. Check on the back side. Yeah. A little bit, probably, probably be fine, but uh, at the very least we, we should keep an eye on that. So, need to get this guard off sooner rather than later. There is a pipe just, not bad, but it is just a bit chafed there. See how long a pipe that is. So, it's difficult to know where, where to go with this because you... You can. The machine's got to be right, but at the same time, you can you can go just too far. Right. Might get that guard off before I do the greasy PTO shaft. So we've decided to take all the pipes off, all the pipes off, all the guards off, the back. As I say, this one needs a repair. You can see it better there. Um. Dead easy repair to do, to be fair. Nothing serious in that. Um, but it was more so to have a look at the condition of the pipes. And a little tiny mark there and there. Big pipes are all, from what I can see, a little bit of a mark there. But yeah, the pipe, the big pipes, all the way back to the pump are in very, very good to condition. I'm really happy about that. Little pipes, I mean, from what I can see, can't really fault them. They've got a couple of little marks on them, which I'll take them cable ties off and... Well, no, they don't want taken off, they just want relocating a bit, really. Um, it's just where they come through here, which, I mean... that. I'm tempted to make, to make the old bigger, make the old bigger, and also put something. So I know they're they're guarded, but you can see that one there. That one is a concern. I think. I can't see any uh, any joints in it. So they look. That looks like it goes all the way bloody back. There's a couple there just pinching a little bit as well. So they want a dressing. They're not too bad. They'll be all right. That one down there is a bit of a concern, but... We have a friendly man with a, with a van that comes out, out to get you out of trouble when your hydraulic hoses go, so I might just run it and hope for the best. But yeah, can't fault them. Bang this guard back on. So we're, we've got a few things going on, but we're getting somewhere. Um, if you remember, the bottom of that was a bit bent up. Got all that nice and straight now. Um, just looking into this. I think that corner is going to end up coming off. I want to find something to put around that edge, just so it's not a sharp metal edge on the pipe. Uh, got a hole drilled here at the end of this crack stops that crack creeping any further I've also done the same on the back edge there so, now the old trusty grinder doing that because I said it was, it was going to have that bit off. 
Oh, well. That's it. Might make it just a bit of a trough for the weld to go in. Right, so we've got the basic plan with this now. Um, obviously, we're going to have to weld the cracks up now, but we've made this just a bit more wider and a bit kinder on the edges. So we just, after we've welded it, we can see if we can find some sort of no more nails or something. Fill it with that. And then that will just, he says. Ready? All right, man. That'll do. Right, so we'll just go through what we have and haven't done so far. Um, we haven't done anything in, in the head yet. Um, the only thing we really have to do is sharpen the flails for now. Um, I think we made the decision we will be having new comp flails, including the nuts, the bolts and the bushes. Um, but that will be sort of a, a summer job to do. Uh, we've got the guard back on. Pipes are all good condition. Uh, cracks are now all welded up. Wind it out a bit and put that bit of rubber in silicon in but it should just help the pipe not get uh, damaged we've also put some bigger washers in there because i know these can crack out so that should help with that uh, we have found a bit of an oil leak down here oh, hang on the right mode so that's the uh it's still dripping that's the feed pipe from the tank into the pumps. Um, yep, that's definitely still dripping. It's kind of annoying. Uh, that side wasn't dripping, that side was. But looks like we've disturbed that side, so that side wants to drip now. Um, yeah, that might end up being a new pipe. I think the trouble is that that pipe is that hard. It's not cramping up properly, so a nice new soft pipe with two new clamps. Should solve that. It shouldn't be an expensive pipe, but it is going to probably mean draining the tank. Whether we can put the oil back in, or just for this season, she say she will get new, new oil and new filters over the summer, but I wasn't just planning on doing that just yet, but we might have a... Have a change of plan on that. Uh, the cover for the valve block. I have that that's loose, and the bolt, the bolts are missing, and the bolt holes, which are actually kind of a bit of a stupid idea because they go straight to the top of the valve block, have all stripped out. So I think the plan is we've got got some bolt holes down here that we can hopefully utilise. And either bolt and weld something to start hide this to actually lift it off the valve block. Theoretically. So that's something. Well, I could probably do with doing that today, but we'll see how time goes. Oh, in the cab. We are a little better. The cab's getting in a mess, but we are a little better. Control box is now mounted. I don't know whether it could do with just coming up a little bit, possibly, which that's on the adjuster at the arm that now won't adjust because I've locked the control box to it. So we've done that quite simply, just bent that plate out a bit so it'll fit round, round the armrest. A couple of cable ties, it, it feels solid. So tidy the wires up, power feed now is all looped up and sits there quite nicely. So, I've lost the screwdriver I had in here. There you are. We're gonna have a look. Because somebody was actually genuinely interested, I'm assuming they'd run a similar one. The control box, because these switches are just a bit sticky. On the plus side, they're sticky neutral, not sticky in work. So, nice and steady. Ooh. 
pull something off already, that's a good start. <laughs> But this is a bit more complicated than I thought. So, be careful not to pull any more wires. Yeah, we're going to have to remember that that one pulls out easily. Right. So, these are the contacts. Hang on show you that properly so yeah very simple switches as you can see basically all it is is the contacts here get dirty and don't make a good good contact so that's literally what we've got to do just clean up all them contacts and hopefully we'll get a good a better feed on it. Do you know what that little wire is? Hang on. Oh it's the LED by the looks of it. But I have a nasty feeling if the LED is not on then the box is dead. So, yeah, worth remembering. Right. So, first attempt. Keep things simple. This is contact cleaner. Right, which is now dribbling down my leg, lovely, push that back in, put the box back on, right, see what happens. back in the box. Right, so this isn't quite going to plan. Files are put in there. Dust. So, well, basically, make sure that box is off, PTO is off, and all that. We tried the electrical contact cleaner and it hasn't worked. So we've actually got it 
done weird things partly due to operator area and now I've done and head into the wall. So hopefully this will <laughs> there goes what little light I had on it. Mind you, that's that's not too bad I don't think. <laughs> I know somebody did comment that these boxes are unreliable. Well, we, yes, they probably do. I wouldn't say they're, they're unreliable. They just require maintenance, but they can actually be maintained. The switches aren't throwaway switches. They're actually uh, serviceable switches. I don't know what that's, where's that supposed to have a wire up there? So, basically, what I'm doing because th these switches they work on basically the brass bar hitting it and joining the two little contacts together to make the connection. So but every time you make connection, it makes a little spark and the contacts will get dirty and eventually they'll stop making contact. But all I need, a bit of emery cloth or a little file. Give them a bit of brighten up and they should make a good contact again. Whereas if you go to the more modern boxes, when something goes wrong, I don't know what you can really do with them. Right. That's top three. Back three, or whatever you want to call it. I'm getting to these two now. I was hoping the contact cleaner would work, but obviously not. This is actually recording, isn't it? Uh, yes. Before I realised I've rambled on talking to myself. See, all I'm doing is pinching the two contacts together between the file. Run the file a little bit. Should be cleaning the contacts up. Of course, being careful not to damage any wires in the process. Which isn't actually that easy. Last one. How am I supposed to get into that one? Look down. Look down. Pull my hand in a weird way. Go between the wires, over the wires, under the wires. Right. Okay. LED back in because it pulls out so easily. Remember, I haven't brought the screwdriver back in, in with me. I've got one on here. I think I've got one on here. That one. That one. That one. So. That one in. Got that one in. My box still lights so up, that's a good start. Right. 
Okay, see what happens. Oh, by Jove, I think we've gone and done it. Now we'll see how good I've got it. Well, I'm going to say that was a success. So, um, well, the flails are nearly all sharp. There's there's three left to sharpen that edge off. But um, I think the grind has finally died. But uh, she's sharpened. She's greased. I'm going to say we've got that uh, oil leak stopped. I will stick a new pipe on that for next season. Um, troll bot, the cover for all the uh, spool block. Um, we've put a bit of rubber on top of there, so that should sit better. Control box is in. Control box is working. So... There's only one thing left to do. Well, it's, it's not the prettiest work I've done, but it is 
an old hedge that we're trying to smash into set shape so it never will look pretty but it's on it works so now i've got to go take it off because <laughs> i've got other things to do ah well so we have officially run out of time for the day um bass is all set up to go on the topper for some reason there's some links that have disappeared so i can't use my hydraulic top link so i can't lift me edge me topper high enough to be able to get it into the shed kind of bit of a, a frustration why will you there we do now are you going to focus or not focus focus so but yeah she's ready monday morning i've got jobs to do with her hedge cutter is sat there ready to be hooked on again there is a little bit of a oil underneath it which why is that you cheapskate that's been welded oh dear shocking so, but yeah, um, does I seem to have a little bit of a leak here and there, but for the age of that, she, that's not too bad. She's gone out, she's worked, she's even been paid for the job. She's actually earned her first couple of quid, actually in my pocket. So absolutely made up on that. Uh, there is still crap in the workshop that's supposed to go in the van that I've just, uh, just had enough for one day. It's been a good day, and then I've come to put the topper on, and it just all went. Uh, but the important things um, the hedge cutter is checked over, the hedge cutter works. Yes, there's a few things that aren't just quite 100% with it, but she can go out and work, do a bit, get a proper shakedown. And then, we can get it 100% right, race start next season. Which that is what it's all about. And of course, as everyone has been so kind of pushing for, like I said at the start of the video. Do you remember that? That was a while ago. There are parts here for the International, which again, when we've got time, we can crack on with that and start getting that into a usable state. It's been a fair day somehow. But anyway, that is it for today. Um, the mug. Do not forget about the mug. I forgot to bring the box up with me. I was going to do it up here. So I will pull the, na pull the name out of the box tonight. And the winner shall be coming across here somewhere now. Uh, made a up it but congratulations anyway <laughs> that's it i'm done for the day i really am done for the day don't forget to give the video a grubby thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to go down in in the comment section to talk to each other there is also of course the shop if you would like any merchandise i am done i have had enough for one day don't forget to stay safe stay well look after yourself look after each other and we shall see you on the next one I'm going to finish with a beautiful Ford.